It's almost comical how identical vegans are. From the food they're eating to the advice that they spew out over and over again as if it is a fact. It's almost like there's this giant vegan Bible and everyone is an expert gospel preacher. We're going to take a look at a young lady's vegan week of eating. And what I want you guys to notice is the similarities in the food she's eating and the things she's saying. We have seen this in dozens and dozens, pretty much every single vegan out there to some degree. Interestingly enough, the main thing here is the response to this girl's video from other people. Anytime a vegan doesn't look healthy, is a little skinny, seems to not be eating a ton of food, they start blaming the person that they have an eating disorder, that they're not doing the vegan diet right, as to deter people from the negatives of the vegan diet. This falls in line with the no true Scotsman fallacy, where if someone isn't doing something in line with what you believe, you try to discredit them as opposed to blaming the true cause. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be about a full week of what I eat. Yeah, you guys know I love to eat a healthy plant-based diet. Plant-based doesn't always mean automatically healthy, so I wanna show you guys my way. And I love fresh whole foods. The fresher the better, and the more colorful and vibrant, the more nutritious, so yeah. Okay, so we're only 25 seconds into this video, she already started the video with, hey guys, she's playing this ridiculous music in the background. She's already claiming a plant-based diet is healthy, just repeating stuff ad nauseum without actually giving any sort of resources, proof, saying that vegetables, the more fresh and colorful, the healthier they are. To me, the fact that these people are able to speak about these things off the top of their head as if they are assumed and that everyone knows them is a problem that falls in line with conventional wisdom and culture. We have been told our whole lives that fruits and vegetables are good for us, so when these vegans come and say that this plant-based diet is so healthy, people believe them. So yeah, I thought it would be fun to show you a full week of what I eat. I also love to practice intermittent fasting, and I love to eat raw during the day. So I've been doing those two things for quite a while now. I've seen amazing benefits. I'm also going to include the times of my meals. So yeah, you guys know exactly when I eat. Just in general, I really want to encourage you guys, listen to your body when you're hungry. Never eat just because it's lunchtime or breakfast if you're actually not hungry. Yeah, let's get into it. I hope you guys enjoy watching. Here is a full week of eating. So I do agree with this. You should not be eating if you're not hungry. A lot of people tend to confuse hunger with thirst, but I'm led to believe that anyone on a vegan diet is always going to be hungry because of the incredible blood sugar fluctuation. So if this girl is going to tell me that she's actually not hungry in the morning on a vegan diet, I don't believe her. morning water I do lots of fresh lemon. Lemon really helps to flush our toxins and it helps to get your bowel moving to go to the bathroom. Add lots of fresh lemon and I'm also gonna add some cucumber. Guys I can't make this up. Every single vegan starts their day with lemon water. They say it's cleansing, it's detoxing, it's alkalizing, all of these ridiculous things. Guys, if you think something is going to detox your body, that is what the liver is for. That is what water fasting is for. If you think lemon is going to alkalize your blood, that is not true. Your stomach is acidic and it will always remain at an acidic pH. Your blood is always slightly alkaline and your body will do its best to maintain homeostasis by keeping your blood at a slightly alkaline pH. And lemons don't specifically stimulate bowel movements. It's going to be a matter of hydration. So if you needed water to push the digestive waste through your system, obviously drinking water with a little bit of lemon in it is going to stimulate your digestion. 
and I typically do this the night before and then it has time to sit overnight and to really get the flavor out of the ingredients. I also love to add fresh ginger. I either use fresh ginger or I get ginger shots. It also really helps your digestion too. It also really beats up your metabolism. And then I also add some fresh aloe vera. So I use the whole leaf for my smoothies, but for the water it's just easier to get 100% fresh aloe vera juice. There's nothing added. So this is so this is my detox morning water, which I have every morning. I have the whole can, sometimes even two. Lots of lemon, cucumber, ginger, and fresh aloe vera. Really good to get your digestion a good, it was too full. So really good to get your digestion a good kickstart. This is what I drink every day. So this is gonna be the same for every day. I wanted to show it to you once. Detoxmosis water. This obsession with detox to me is absolutely crazy. What exactly are you detoxing? Do you think there are toxins in your body? Do you think there's something wrong with your body? If there is something in your body that you need to detox, adding cucumber, lemon, aloe vera juice to water isn't going to detox something more so than just regular water. These ideas are, are just, it's just so crazy that someone would watch this and actually think that this is going to do something. It really, ties back to what I said earlier about conventional wisdom and the association with fruits and vegetables being healthy. And people really are convinced that when they do these things, they feel good. But just try drinking water in the morning instead of that, and you probably won't notice any difference whatsoever. But again, the main issue here is that she's saying these things and she truly believes in them, and she's convincing other people that this is something you should be doing. So it's smoothie time. My favorite time. We are going for a ride in the blender today. And I am curious how many rides we are gonna go on. I have some kale, some cucumber, some celery, broccoli, fresh aloe vera, two frozen bananas, and some frozen raspberries. So yeah, you just add all the ingredients in the blender. I also added some fresh water. For anyone who doesn't like broccoli, put Okay, I'm just a little bit confused here. This girl's toilet must look like the botanical garden and ha fresh water. This is another one of my pet peeves with vegans. They use these words, these buzzwords before and after they say things like cleansing, alkalizing, detox, fresh, vibrant, colorful. They use positive associations of words with food. They use emotion. They are driven by emotion as opposed to fact if she actually had any semblance of understanding of nutrition well first of all i wouldn't be critiquing her video because she wouldn't be following this crazy ridiculous vegan diet but if she could actually address and assess every single one of these foods individually on a nutritional standpoint what the availability of the vitamins and minerals are then we could be having a conversation but this is the key thing here guys these vegans don't actually have an understanding of nutrition. They just heard things from their friends, they see people doing other things in videos, and they repeat things over and over again as opposed to doing research themselves. And by research, this is very simple stuff. If you Google broccoli, and you look at the nutrition profile of broccoli, and you see what vitamins are in it, and then you look up, okay, vitamin A broccoli, you might probably find that vitamin A in broccoli is actually in the form of carotene, and then if you look up, okay, carotene digestion or carotene absorption, or can we utilize carotene? You'll find data. So this is not something that's incredibly complicated to figure out. It's just these people are, they either don't care or they're, I mean, I can't blame them. You know, most people don't really like putting a lot of time and effort into things and they'd rather be emotionally driven and be happy. And, you know, on one hand, I, I wish I was stupid and happy like that. It's, you know, I'm like a cynical, pessimistic person, but what are you gonna do? Anyone who doesn't like broccoli, put it in your smoothies because you generally taste it and it's really high in protein and has like lots of benefit. And then for the aloe vera, you just wanna cut a piece of the leaf and then you can even have the skin, but it's quite bitter. So I prefer to only use the gel. Just cut out the gel 
this stuff is really magic. It's so good for you. And I have two frozen bananas to make it a bit more sweet. Some frozen raspberries. I love to add something frozen to smoothies because that makes it really cold and creamy and gives you that really nice consistency. The reason she actually likes adding frozen things to smoothies is because she's anemic and she craves ice. My smoothie is ready. It's so creamy. Mmm. Oh my god, it's so good. No, it's really so good. You don't taste any greens at all. It just tastes like a really nice, cold, creamy, sweet smoothie. So, I'm gonna have two glasses, like the whole bladder. And yeah, see you guys at my next meal. Oh my God. This is so ridiculous. I literally, I literally did that in my, if you guys haven't seen my carnivore goes vegan for a day video, I literally did that. I, I, I drank like this slop, this girl is drinking this green slop and she drinks it and then she says, mm, it's so good. And then she says it doesn't taste like vegetables. Holy shit. This is so funny. I can't make this up. People are going to be looking at this stuff like five, ten years later and be like, what the fuck? It is um, 4.30 now and I'm having my first meal. It's going to be a mono meal of Metro Dates. And I had them in the freezer for a few hours because I love them when they're super cold. And I'm having a tea with that. Mm. They're so, so good. I know it's say it all the time, but they really are amazing. And when you eat dates, you don't need any other sweets. So, so satisfying. And it tastes like pure caramel. And enjoy my dates and my tea. One date is five grams of sugar. She's having 100 grams of sugar in this meal. Uh, honestly, I'm, you know, as, as funny as these videos can be, I'm, I'm starting to really feel bad. And, and this is the reason that I, I make these vegan critique video. I don't really have any bias here. I'm not really insulting people. I'm just showing people how crazy this is. So my dinner is ready. Having a big salad, all kinds of different veggies and my dressing is one avocado just mixed into the different veggies and then I have a bit more avocado on top here and yeah all kinds of greens especially bitter greens like chicory arugula watercress broccoli sprouts cherry tomatoes cucumber red bell pepper zucchini red onion ginger <laughs> all everything in there looks so delicious i can't wait to get into it and i'm also going to do some work while i'm eating so that was her monday day of eating and in regards to that last meal a couple things to touch on avocados never really had a lot of fruit or flesh on them. Modern avocados are far different than what used to grow in the wild. And tying back into the idea that vegetables are so healthy for us, just by having a huge plate full of vegetables that don't really have any semblance of nutrition, once you actually look into the nutrient availability, it really is damaging people's health. And if this girl ate like this every single day, I'm 100% sure she would develop goiter because cruciferous vegetables have various anti-nutrients in them such as goitrogens that inhibit your thyroid function. Not only that, I don't believe this is what this girl ate today. I believe that this girl is cheating on her diet and misleading her viewers. And this is probably one of the most important messages that I'm going to get out in this video is just because you see someone do something on camera it is not an indication of what they are doing in their day-to-day -day life. In the case of a vegan diet, if someone cheats on a vegan diet, they're misleading people because when you cheat on a vegan diet and you eat animal foods or any other high calorie foods, you're saying, okay, this is healthy, but I can't actually follow this diet because I'm missing something or there's actually something wrong with it. In the case of me following a carnivore diet, if I cheat on the carnivore diet, there's no real detriment, so to speak, because my claims in regards to the nutrient content of the carnivore diet, there's nothing missing. You can get every single vitamin and mineral on a carnivore diet. In the case of a vegan diet, we know there are a lot of nutrients that are deficient. Vitamin A in the form of retinol is not present, and carotene has a limited availability. Some people can't even convert it. Vitamin K2 is not present in most people's diets in large amounts. Uh, it is present in fermented foods and high-quality animal foods. We have DHA, omega-3 fatty acids something that's usually swept under the rug in the context of a vegan diet. 
I mean, algae supplements tend to be polluted, and vegans definitely don't get enough DHA. Uh, B12, of course, what's most associated with neurocognitive issues. And if any of you vegans are out there and you think blood levels are D12 of indicative of tissue levels, you might want to do a little research on that because even if you do take B12 supplements, I would personally be concerned about your mental health and well-being. Uh, overall, guys, I don't think this is all this girl consumed during the day. And this is from a caloric standpoint. You know, we could safely say that she's not really consuming enough calories or as many calories as she should. But in regards to the food volume, the food volume is so high, I don't think this lady could actually consume any more than she is right now. That shake and that salad are so voluminous that to eat any more than that and to put any more than that in your digestive system is a testament to what foods humans are supposed to be eating. If you compared a human's digestive system to a cow's digestive system, cows have five gallons of liquid fermenting in their stomach at all times. And this is five gallons as if I was a human. Cow stomachs are much larger than five gallons of fluid. So imagine you had, you know, you drank five gallons of water and that was what was in your stomach. That is the digestive capability of what we would need if we were ruminant animals. Their bacteria can literally ferment cellulose into fat. Humans literally evolved because of our ability to procure high calorie, low bulk foods that were giving us nutrition. And we didn't require large stomachs. We didn't require large muscles to procure our food. This allowed our brain growth and development. So thank you guys for watching. I've touched on a few points I might not have in this video and I could probably touch on dozens more, but uh, I'm gonna leave that for you guys to explore my other vegan day of eating videos, vegan critique videos. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and share the video. Everything will be down in the comment section below pinned. So you'll have the original video. There'll be my Amazon shop that has a bunch of supplements and high nutrient foods that I consume every day. There's my Patreon, which has exclusive videos, and I answer in-depth questions on my Patreon for my followers. Got my website, frank definocom You can buy hygiene products, Frankie's lip balm. I got my hair pomade in. I brushed my teeth this morning with my tooth powder and I'm wearing my deodorant. So if you are interested in products that are free of any modern chemicals and have minimal ingredients, check those out on my website. Last but not least, I am on Instagram. I am on Twitter. A lot of funny pictures on Instagram, guys. If you want to hear me argue between other carnivore dieters on Twitter, check it out. And if you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving your overall health, whether you're a vegan trying to do a vegan diet as optimally as possible, I can make supplement recommendations and tell you what foods you need to eat, or you're looking to get started on a carnivore diet, shoot me an email or contact me through the form on my website down below.